Okay, I think we're starting. So welcome to the flipping and whole welcome to the flipping and wholesaling houses in New Yorkshire. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping and wholesaling houses, or if you are already doing it, how to grow your business. So I got a question. I'm trying to figure it out. It says on contract we have 90 days to close. It doesn't say when. Buyer only said is rate locked until March 27th. Sellers have until April 20th to close. I don't know what the hell the 90 days has to do with anything. Can the buyer lose his down payment if he decides he doesn't want to buy because of the rate? Okay, so this takes us a little bit um, towards uh, previous videos where we talked about what a mortgage contingency really means. So, there's a lot to unpack in this question. As a buyer with a mortgage contingency, right? And I never have a mortgage contingency when I'm a buyer, but I almost always have a mortgage contingency when I'm a seller. Uh, not if I'm wholesaling, but if I'm actually selling a property. I'm trying to get under contract on something today that's been dragging on. Um, can a buyer lose his down payments? First of all, buyers don't lose their down payment so easy. So you're, at, you, I think what you're asking, I think what the question is, is if a buyer's rate lock expires and his rate goes up, will he still be subject? Would he still be subject to close? Will he still be forced to close or lose his down payment? Right. Those are the only two possibilities that happen from a buyer's perspective. Either you lose your down payment, which we can talk about more later or another thing, because it's not so simple that you just lose the down payment. Or you close. Now, if the buyer's rate lock expires, first of all, before the buyer's rate lock expires, a few things can happen, right? You can extend the rate lock, which usually has a fee, but sometimes it's not that much. Also, you can look and see where rates are. Now, I have the unique benefit of working in the mortgage industry for 17 years. So I can tell you, right now, we're in a relative, as even with all the bank runs and failures, um, the rate environment has been pretty steady recently, right? Rates are around six and six and a half, six and three quarters. That's where they've been. So, and they haven't been much better really since the summer. So I, had, I recently had a situation where a buyer said, I'm going to lose rate lock. And I said, okay. I said, if you want to walk, you can walk. I said, but I knew where rates are going. And I, you don't have to be a genius or in the mortgage business for a long time to know where rates are going. You can literally look it up on a million different websites. So, I said, relock your relock your rate. Sorry, I'm gonna get you. Um, and they said, okay. So um, I think the question is, and again, the question was not worded very very carefully. I think the question is, well, what if the buyer doesn't want to buy because the rate went up a lot? And here's the truth: if the rate goes up a lot the buyer can ask his mortgage lender, broker or banker, which someone wants a clarification on, maybe I'll do a video on that another time. Hey, can you just deny me for the loan? Oh, some, by the way, so it really, let's be clear, like if you were if you were getting a loan in June, right? And if you were buying a house in June and things got dragged on until August, September, it's very feasible that you don't qualify for the loan anymore and you will be denied a mortgage. And if you're denied your mortgage and you have a standard mortgage contingency, then guess what? You can get your deposit back and you're out of the, you're out of the deal. I think what's being asked is if the buyer doesn't want to do it anymore because the rate went up a little bit and he's going to pay a little bit more, but he'll still qualify for it. Now, certainly if he doesn't qualify anymore because the rates went up a lot and now his, just to give you a simple primer on how people qualify for loans, you have a debt to income ratio, which is all the debt, including the mortgage, which is all the pity, the principal interest tax and insurance on your loan, and all the debts that show up in your credit report. And that has to be a certain ratio of your income. Typically, you want it under 45%, right, for all your debts. Now, let's say the rate, the rate what happened in, in, in July or August happens, and where you thought you're getting a 3% rate, now you're getting a 6% rate. And suddenly, your DTI, your debt to income ratio, goes from 40 to 60. Then you don't qualify for a loan anymore. It's really simple to get a denial. But I think the question, and again, I'm guessing here, is what if the guy just decides, I don't want to do it anymore. It's going to be another $200. I didn't really want this house anyway. You may be able to call your mortgage broker or banker. And another reason why I don't recommend anybody go to their bank like Chase or Bank of America, Wells Fargo for this, because those people probably wouldn't do this. But if you're, doing, you're dealing with somebody you know, you could say, hey, please just deny me for the loan, right? And again, it's simple to deny somebody for a loan. Documents expire all the time. And when I was working in a mortgage company, I denied people for loans who asked me to deny them for the loans. So 
Can you? Technically, probably not if you still qualify. But if you work with uh, someone you trust, he can deny. He can give you a denial on your mortgage for insufficient income or insufficient income documentation because your pay stubs or your W twos expired. That kind of thing. So, can you get out of it? Can you lose your down payment? So I guess let's talk about losing down payments. So, assuming you have a good attorney, and I implore you to never ever use like your cousin or your friend who doesn't really practice real estate law and does this on the side, but you figured he'd give you a good deal and only charge you 500 bucks and save you a thousand. Assuming you have a good attorney knows what they're doing. Even if you default as a buyer, right? So you give a $50,000 down payment because you're buying a house for 500,000. And just, you say, I'm out. I want out. A good attorney is going to go, let's, let's negotiate this because what, what doesn't happen is what, what what people think happens is the buyer says I'm out and suddenly that money magically gets wired to the seller's bank account. What happens is that money remains in escrow and until the buyer's attorney agrees to release it, it can't go anywhere, right? I've had situations where the other side, I had a buyer that was using a terrible attorney and they changed their mind and they just released the money. I was shocked, right? Because I probably would have, I would have negotiated with them on it. Uh, because it, it'll sit in escrow for three years during litigation, and litigation will eat up all, anything you would have gotten from it. So it's not a simple thing. So again, this question, can a buyer lose down payment if he decides he doesn't want to buy because of the rate? If you have a real shitty attorney and you don't know your mortgage uh, professional, yes, you can lose your down payment. If you either have a decent mortgage professional who will do you a favor or a decent attorney, you're probably not going to lose your down payment. And I think in this scenario, you're talking about like three weeks. So like people just don't understand how rates work. It's very rare for there to be a huge movement in rates over a three-week period. Very rare. It's happened. I've lived through it. I lived through a crazy situation where rates were moving so fast. I was on the phone with a with a, with a a client who was looking for a quote. And during that conversation, rates actually moved twice. An eighth of a percent higher than another eighth of a percent higher. The guy thought I was joking. But it's very rare. For it to happen like that and really what, what even a quarter of a percent is not going to be that much of a difference um in your payment so i think the, if i understand the question correctly if you either have a good mortgage professional uh, and certainly you should always have one and if you have a good um attorney you should have one you're probably not going to lose your down payment and more likely what's going to happen is you're going to close on the loan because the rates aren't going to move that much and it's not going to matter Right, this idea that if I'm not my not rate lock protected, that I'm vulnerable to the worst things. I can't think, bad things happen. And I was foolish when I was in the mortgage business in the beginning, and I wasn't locking people in and just telling them to wait because we made more money on shorter lock terms than longer lock terms. And then I got really left holding, left with my pants down, and I had to lose money on a couple of deals. That wasn't good, um, but most of the time rates aren't going to move that much. And the fact that your rate's expiring, before the rate expires, you have options. You can extend the rate for a fee, which may or may not be a lot of money. It depends on the size of the loan, right? If it's a million-dollar loan, it can be expensive. If it's a 200000 loan, it probably won't be a lot. So um, those are the things to do. It, it's, it's rare that you're not going to close because your rate lock expires. It's rare. Now, if you were in this situation in June and July and your rate lock expired, you were in big trouble. But you've got to understand... Before that rate lock expires, everyone's going to look at what current rates are compared to what you are locked in at. If there's a huge difference, everybody's going to scramble to make sure you're extended and that you can do what you can um, so that you don't get hurt, um, you know, to the extent that they can. Another reason why you don't want to go to like a Chase or a Bank of America, because they're not going to do those things. They're not going to look out for you. They don't care. Um, and that's what I got for today. I mean, I, it's a tough question because I didn't really understand it, but I think I got the gist of it. I hope this was helpful. If you're interested, all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com or learn to flip at wholesale.com. If you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help the algorithm, which is showing my video to a lot more people and who then end up liking it and, and more people see the video. So thank you very much. Um, please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week as much as I can. There's some Jewish holidays coming up, Passover. It's going to be hard. I'm going to have to do like two days for a few days. Um, but... I will say that uh, you can ask anything. It does not have to be about the video you're watching. It could be about anything. And if it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something I've covered recently, I'll send you a link to a video on it. If it's something I haven't covered ever or recently, 
I'll do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.